welcome to Tuesday Night Live, uh, part of Grace Fellowship of Babyville, our uh, Tuesday Night Bible Study. Welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're just loving Jesus and loving people, amen, and uh, so glad that you're, you're joining us uh, for this Bible study tonight. We've been talking about the uh, going through the book of John, uh, verse by verse, and we're going to continue that tonight, amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you so much. I thank you, God, for even the gift of being able to pray, even the gift of being able to talk to you and have communi com communication and fellowship with you. God, I'm just so grateful for <laughs> everything that you've given to us. God, every tool, every weapon, every victory comes from you. God, every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father, from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. God, thank you so much for all of your grace, all of your abilities, all of the love that you have for us. God, I ask that you use your word tonight to change people. I ask God that you use revelation from your word tonight to make a difference in people's lives. I thank you, God, that you bring people out of darkness into light. I thank you, God, that you heal the sick. I thank you, God, that you give miracles, God, to those that have need. And I thank you, God, that you bless people who are earnestly and diligently seeking after you in your word. And I give you thanks for all of that. In the almighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So, um, as I said, we've been uh, looking at the book of John, chapter 1, and so we're going to continue that. Last week, we made quite a bit of progress. We actually got through um, verse, <laughs> I think it was verse 28 last week, and um, so I'm going to pick up right here with verse 29, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to get through the rest of this chapter tonight. <laughs> I think it's possible. All things are possible to him that believes. I believe that we can do it. Amen. So I'm going to pick up reading here with verse 29. We're in John chapter 1. I'm going to be reading out of the New American Standard Version of the Bible. And it says here, the next day he, and he's talking about John the Baptist here, the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I do, for he existed before me. And we've talked about that last week, so I'm not, not going to go there. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I guess I get this from, from uh, Pastor Callahan. I mean, he couldn't, couldn't uh, read the Bible. He couldn't read a verse out of the Bible without wanting to teach on it. And uh, I find that happening to me as we're going through this, uh, this study of the book of John, and it's it's just really difficult to read through a verse and not want to stop and just share so many things that, that God just, uh, you know, uh, things that are important, things that God has revealed in the past, things that God's just dropping into my spirit even uh, as we just read through it. And uh, But anyway, let me let me continue. It's just, just an exciting thing. I mean, this Bible is so, it is so wonderful. It's a tremendous book. It's, uh, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday and, um, you know, they didn't exactly say that the Bible is just a book, but uh, some of the things they said in context kind of, you know, it kind of made it sound like that, but um, it's not true. The Bible is not just like any other book. The Bible is inspired by God. It, it says it is, and the Bible is inspired by God. Um, the Bible is a living book. It's alive. It's the only book, it's the only book of its kind, a uh, collection of 66 books, but it's the only book of its kind that is actually living, that was actually breathed. I mean, if you think about this, I mean, you know, when God created man in the Garden of Eden, um, he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth, the Bible says, and when he'd formed him, he, he leaned over the body that he had formed from the, from the dirt. And he breathed the breath of life into man. That is what gave man life in the garden. So this word is actually also God breathed, the Bible says. God inspired. Amen. And so it is alive. It is alive. And we've talked about this in the past too. There's that verse in 
uh, Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah 55, that talks about the, there's two two verses in there. It talks about how God says, when my word will not return to me void or empty, but it will accomplish that which I have sent it to accomplish. And it will, it will perform that thing which I have sent it to do. And so this is, this is not like any other word. It's not like any other book. It's not like any, any other thing anywhere uh, in the universe. It's just, it's an amazing thing that God has given us uh, by giving us his word. It is alive. Things that are alive can have impact. They can have, they can make a difference. They can bring change to, uh, to things, to people, to situations, to circumstances. And this Bible, this book, more than any other living thing, can bring change to your life, can bring, bring change to your circumstances, your situations, your physical body, your needs, your, uh, your desires, your destiny, your ministry, whatever it might be. This book uh, is alive, it is inspired by God, and it has the power within it to make a difference in your life. Amen. So all that's just kind of a footnote <laughs> as we're reading through this. But um, <laughs> let's press on here. Uh, verse 30, I want to read this uh, begin, beginning with verse 30 again. This is he, John the Baptist speaking here. So this is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. I did not recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel I came baptizing in water. So, verse 32, John testified saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Okay, so last week we were talking about John the Baptist's testimony. This is a continuation of John the Baptist's testimony. And uh, I want you real quick, if you have your Bible, uh, which you should, we're doing a Bible study. If you want to flip over to the book of Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 3, <clears throat> and... Beginning with verse 13 in Matthew chapter 3, this is just another, um, another account of the baptism of Jesus uh, and an encounter that Jesus had with John the Baptist. So uh, here what we just read in John chapter 1 was what John the Baptist said, but it's, you'll find that in, in the book of John chapter 1 that there's a few days that were kind of condensed into the testimony of of John the Baptist. But in Matthew chapter 3 here, beginning with verse 13, it says, Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all, all righteousness. And then he permitted him. And then after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open and he saw John the Baptist here is talking about John the Baptist saw the spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting upon Jesus, lighting upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now turn back over to John chapter one. John chapter 1, and let's read this again. So, beginning with verse um, 29. So, the next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who is higher than I, higher rank than I, for he existed before me. I did not recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven. 
and he remained upon him. So at this point in John the Baptist's testimony here in John chapter 1, uh, he has, I mean, there was a day before this where uh, Jesus came to John the Baptist and was baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. And as Jesus was coming up out of the water, uh, what we just learned in Matthew chapter 3, that's when the Spirit came, descended out of heaven like a dove and rested on Jesus. And um, and John the Baptist here is saying, now, this is what um, uh, he said to me. So the one who commanded me, look at this in verse uh, 32, John testified saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained on him. I did not recognize him, but he was sent. Uh, he that sent me to baptize in water, he that sent me to baptize in water, also is the one who said to me um, that this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. The one that you see the dove descending, the, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven and resting or abiding on him. He is the one who will baptize in the Holy Spirit. And then John says, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Okay, so he also heard what's not uh, recorded here in John chapter 1, which is recorded in Matthew chapter 3, is that there was also a voice that came out of heaven um, on the day that Jesus was baptized, at that moment when he came up out of the water, and John the Baptist, and we don't know if everybody saw this or if it was just John the Baptist. You know, God didn't tell everybody that, um, you know, you're going to see um, the Holy Spirit descend out of heaven like a dove and rest upon him. He told John the Baptist that. So John saw it. And we know that John heard the voice. Uh, we don't know if everybody heard the voice, but we know John heard the voice uh, and the voice from heaven that said, Behold, this is my beloved son uh, in whom I am well pleased. Okay, so John here says in verse 34, John chapter 1, he says, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the son of God. So at Jesus' baptism, whether John before that was convinced that Jesus was the Son of God or not, uh, we know that Jesus and John the Baptist were, were cousins, so to speak, um, but whether he really believed or really knew that Jesus was the, the Son of God before that, we know that after that day when Jesus came to be baptized of John the Baptist and came up out of the water, that exactly what God told John the Baptist would happen happened that John was then convinced this Jesus, he is the son of God. That's what the voice said. But now let's back up a second here and look at verse 29 again. So the next day, Jesus saw, uh, next day, he, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man that is higher than rank than I, for he existed before me. I didn't recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. And John testified and said, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven. But now, listen, back up to verse 29 again. The next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All right, so... <laughs> let's let's pause here for a second, all right, and then we're gonna make some tracks. Okay, <laughs> we'll be, we'll pause here for just a second. This <laughs> this is something amazing. Okay, so if you go back and you study Old Testament history, um, you will find that um, here, two particular things I want to point out in verse twenty nine here. Uh, one is that John the Baptist is referring to Jesus as the Lamb of God, okay? So from Old Testament law, um, they, would, they, they would take, the high priest would take a lamb once a year and slaughter a lamb and take the blood into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and that was an atonement for the entire sins of the nation, okay? And so that 
that was a uh, it was an atonement. It was something. It was a sacrifice that um, brought the people of Israel that covered their sins for all the prior year. It covered their sins and brought them again into a position where they were atoned or at at one at atoned uh, at one with God. <laughs> okay. At home, you can split that word, it's at one, being at one with God, okay? And so, if you remember back in Matthew chapter uh, 3, when Jesus showed up to be baptized with John the Baptist, and John the Baptist started to say, hey, no, I mean, I need, I'm the one that needs to be baptized with you, and Jesus said, permit it to be so, or suffer it to be so, in the King James, let this be so, uh, because this is what is required for us to fulfill all righteousness, Okay, so righteousness and atonement are very similar. Uh, when we are made righteous, we are made at one with God. When we're made righteous, it's because um, of the sacrifice of Jesus that he shed his blood uh, symbolically um, in the Old Testament of the lamb that was slain, the lamb that was sacrificed and the blood sprinkled on the mercy seat that would atone for all the sins of the nation of Israel so that they once again could be at one with God. Jesus did once and for all, the Bible says, once and for all, the sacrifice of one man made us righteous before God. Amen. And so <laughs> our righteousness is not something that lasts a moment and then you know we start adding sin to it and adding sin to it and adding sin to it and then it, it it depletes the righteousness that was paid bought and paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus no I'm not suggesting that you can sin live a, a sinful life after you receive Jesus and anything that you do is okay it doesn't matter what I'm saying is the sacrifice of Jesus's blood as that sacrificial lamb made you not just uh, not just atoned for your sins, not just covered your sins, but exactly what John the Baptist says here. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus' blood did far more than the blood of uh, lambs, of sheep and goats in the Old Testament law. Jesus' blood didn't just cover sin. Jesus' blood didn't just atone for sin for a short time. Jesus' blood removed sin, okay? So with sin being removed from your life, what stands in your way from having a deep, moving, personal, intimate, satisfying uh, relationship with God where you can clearly hear his voice, where you can easily receive from him when all sin has been removed from between you and God. Now you are completely righteous in right standing. You are right as one should be in position with God. With no sin then you are completely morally upright. You are morally pure and holy. And <laughs> the point is, God did it through Jesus, and then it should be, on our part then, easy to live it out, easy to walk it out. Amen? When we have that understanding of righteousness, when we have that understanding of what Jesus did when he shed his blood as a sacrifice for us and then sprinkled the sprinkled the throne cleansed the heavens uh, with his blood and made us righteous before God you know what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 that he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, so, so many other things that we can, we can pile in here. Um, the verse that I just quoted, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, the last two words in that verse are in him. 
okay? So that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So let me ask you this question. Uh, we'll have feedback time, okay? Let me ask you this question. So if you are truly in Him, um, and you are conscious of it, you're aware of your position in Him, always, He's made you righteous. He's brought you into the throne room of God. You're beholding the face of God. You're, 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 uh, <laughs> the glory of God is accessible to you. The I mean, the healing of God, the miracles of God, the tree of life is here. I mean, the, the crystal sea, the, the, the sea of glass, the, the golden river, you know, uh, I mean, all of these things, uh, the, the, <laughs> the living creatures. I mean, I mean, all of these things are right here because you've been raised up together with him and made to be seated together in heavenly places in him. Okay, so... Uh, if that's the case and, and you work on renewing your mind and become uh, so much aware that this is your new position, then that is when the struggle with uh, repetitive sin just disappears because you are now more aware of a totally different reality, a totally new position in Christ. You are really seated in heaven. And so sin is not, it is not a factor. Um, and some people, that's, that's a tough concept to grasp because you'd think, well, well, how can I, how can I live without messing up? How can I live without sinning? Um, you know, I, I probably am safe to say that when you woke up this morning, you, you at least once you opened your eyes and, and woke up, you at least went 10 minutes without committing a sin. Well, you know, you, if you go 10 minutes, couldn't you go an hour? If you could go an hour, couldn't you go two hours? Couldn't you go the whole day without sinning? Isn't that possible? Isn't that within the realm of possibility? Well, even more so when you're uh, when you have a revelation of where you are seated and where you are positioned and what has uh, actually transpired, what, what has transacted on the inside of you because of the sacrifice of Jesus and the position that you've been elevated into, then it becomes more and more and more possible for you to uh, be free from sin. Amen. And I, you know, I, I never know what I'm going to talk about on these, <laughs> these Bible studies. Sometimes I have something in mind. I've, I've read through this and I know, you know, I, I knew what we were going to be covering or at least I thought I knew what we were going to be covering, but this, none of this was, had anything to do with what I thought we were going to talk about tonight, but uh, hopefully you're getting something out of this. Amen. But, uh, listen, let's go on. So he's, you know, this is wrapping up the testimony of John and uh, we've read through verse 34 where he says, I myself have seen and I've testified that this is the Son of God. Okay, so look at verse 35. Um, we're going to get through here. This is actually uh, after the baptism of Jesus. This is the launch of Jesus' public ministry. And so what we find here is, um, here it says the next day in verse 35. Uh, we'll read through this passage of scripture, and this is where Jesus begins to call some of his disciples and call some people to come and follow him, okay? But beginning with verse 35, it says, Again here the next day John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. So you know, he's starting in with the same thing. And again, we talked about this in the last week or two, where John the Baptist's mission, his ministry, was not to point people to himself. It was to direct people to Jesus. And so that's what he was accustomed to doing. And then we see that's what he's still doing. Even after he baptizes Jesus, and we've talked about this too, that I believe that what John the Baptist should have done is at that point shut down his ministry and became a disciple of Jesus. I mean, what, what is he doing? What is he doing still? Like, I mean, here's Jesus over here. Jesus is teaching. Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is healing, opening blind eyes and healing the lame and, and uh, casting out devils. And I mean, Jesus is doing all this stuff. And here's John the Baptist over here uh, baptizing people. You know, <laughs> he's, he was the one in the wilderness crying, he said, 
Make straight paths for your feet. Prepare the way of the Lord. Well, the Lord is here. So shouldn't you be following him? I, I'm sorry. I'm just getting off on a little bunny trail there. But um, I, I believe that he should have shut his ministry down and began following Jesus. And I feel like if he had done that, he wouldn't have ended up losing his head in prison and having his life cut short. Now, you can send me a nasty note if you want to about that, but that's that's what I believe. Amen. Don't send me a nasty note. I'm just kidding about that. Just don't do it. <laughs> Amen. So, um, again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Verse 37. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. They followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, uh, where are you staying? <laughs> it's almost like they were caught off guard. We don't know what we don't know what to say. We don't know what to ask you. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, just like they, they, he turned around, and he says, What do you What are you after? What are you looking for? What are you seeking? What do you want? And they're like, Um, um, uh, where are you staying? <laughs> anyway, and so he. Uh, Verse 39, he, he said to them, come and you will see. And so they came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. And the 10th hour, the day starts about six o'clock in the morning. Um, and so that would be what, about four o'clock in the afternoon, right? Uh, yeah, that'd be four o'clock in the afternoon. And so one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. Simon Peter's brother. He found first his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Okay, in verse 43, The next day he purposed to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus says to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Peter says to him, Come and see. Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you that I saw you under a fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Wow. Okay. So we're wrapping up this uh, chapter, John chapter 1. Next week we're going to get into John chapter 2. But I want you to, I want to just point out a couple things in uh, how Jesus is calling uh, his disciples. Okay. Important here to note. What we do today sometimes is so far removed from how Jesus actually did things, okay? This is Jesus calling his uh, people, who men who would become his disciples. Notice here, um, when he saw Nathaniel in verse 47, when he saw Nathaniel coming to him, Notice he didn't he didn't say Nathaniel and he didn't see Nathaniel and say Nathaniel you you, uh, you had not to be drinking you had not to be talking that way to your wife you, you had not to be treating your kids that way Nathaniel you had not to be watching that on TV Nathaniel I mean so he listen he didn't use condemnation he didn't use um, uh, well, condemnation. He he didn't <laughs> he he didn't use judgment. Okay, he wasn't judgmental 
and the people that he was calling to follow him. Now, when it comes to the religious people, I mean, Jesus, he, he would convict them. He would say convicting things to them. But when he's talking to people who he's calling to himself, uh, he's not using condemnation. He's not using things that are judgmental. Listen to what he says to Nathaniel. He says, hey, uh, he says, Nathaniel, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. So he's telling Nathaniel something good about himself. And you know what happens when you and I, when we look at somebody and we tell them something good about them? It opens up the doorway of their heart. And I think a lot of times that uh, people are not receptive to what we have to say when we are attempting to share the gospel with them because we take the wrong approach. We're trying to condemn them. We're trying to convict them of their sin. And we see when Jesus is calling disciples that he is opening the doors of their heart by telling them something good about themselves. And you see Nathaniel's response here. Nathaniel said to him, I look at verse 48, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said, and before, Philip, before I called you, you know, and here's one way, listen, I mean, this is like a word of knowledge that Jesus is getting. Um, I don't know that Jesus physically saw Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree. I believe this is a word of knowledge that Jesus saw Nathaniel in his spirit. He saw Nathaniel under a fig tree and um, Nathaniel's response is, Rabbi, or another word for master, or another word for teacher, you are the son of God. So just saying something good to Nathaniel about himself opened up the doors of his heart and endeared him to Jesus and made him want to follow that person. I want to follow that person. Don't you like to be around people that tell you good things about yourself? Don't you kind of shy away from people that are always telling you what you're doing wrong and condemning you and telling you you're not doing it right or you're not doing enough or you're not, you see what I'm saying? So let's rethink our strategy for making disciples. That's what Jesus has assigned every one of us to do. Every one of us believers, we are supposed to uh, be making disciples, not condemning people, not judging people, but making disciples. And how Jesus began making disciples was in telling people what's good about them. Amen. We're going to stop right there. We're a little bit over time, in fact, but uh, we want to invite you to come out and join us Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock at Grace Fellowship of Beattyville, Kentucky. We meet at 1925 Highway 11 South, right beside Callahan Hardware, right across the street from, um, what is the name of that place? <laughs> uh, yeah, the dairy bar, <laughs> the Bobcat Dairy Bar. Yes, I don't know why I always forget about that. They've got, they've got some good food over there, though. Amen. But uh, we invite you to come out. We just listen. We just love the Word. We love Jesus. We love people. We want to have the opportunity to share good things with you and to love on Jesus together with you. Amen. And uh, we love to pray for you too. Amen. If you have a prayer request, um, just send it to us in a message and we will have our prayer team pray with you, pray for you. And uh, we just want to be a blessing to you. Don't ask you anything in return. We see answers to prayer all the time. And so we just want to lift you up in prayer and let God have an opportunity to make a difference in your life. Amen. Will you do that? Just share your prayer request with us in uh, instant messenger or leave it in a comment if you don't mind other people seeing it, but you can definitely send it to us in a in messenger and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pray for you. Amen. We want to see God bless you. Amen. So come and see us Sunday morning too, if you can. And uh, 10 o'clock, 1925, Highway 11 South. Thank you for joining the Bible study tonight. Until next time, I'm Pastor John. 
at Grace Fellowship of Beattyville, loving Jesus and loving people. We'll see you soon.